I bet most of you don't know that in 2016, we had 26 deaths by opioid overdose on the streets of Cambridge, up from 13 in 2015. And we're gonna surpass that number by the summer, sadly. Or that on any given night, like tonight, there are some 500 homeless people on the streets of Cambridge or in our shelters. So as great a city as we are, as financially sound as we are, as many programs and things that we do that we should be proud of and, and we should be proud of them, we are not the socially and economically just community that the people of Cambridge need us to be. And I, will, I am running again because I will not stop and I will not rest until we are. also running because, as Congresswoman Clark said, we are in some crazy times, everybody. Can you believe it's only been like a hundred and something days? It feels like it's been ten years. Right? I'm exhausted. Every day there's some new crazy thing coming out of the White House. And he has orange hair and he walks out. Um, but we in Cambridge, I feel, have a responsibility as one of the cities, the progressive cities, that other places look to to set an example whether it's becoming the largest city on the East Coast to ban plastic bags to help our environment, which <laughs> Councillor Decker, then Councillor Decker, um, Councillor Decker was, or State Rep Decker, when she was on the council, she was like the, the Pedro Martinez. She pitched eight <laughs> innings, she pitched eight strong innings, got us to the finish line, and then I was Papal Bond that came in and closed it up. <laughs> so, um, or whether it's, you know, or whether it's, um, you know, thanks to CAST, uh, you know, filing a, a resolution to ask our, our congressional representatives to start an impeachment investigation in the of Trump. And then had over a dozen cities contact me and us to say, how do we do this in our cities, including Los Angeles? We set an example. And we have an obligation as a progressive community to set that example, especially in this time. So another reason why I'm running is I want to lead that example. I want to be, I want us to remain that progressive city that says to that man, not here, not now, not ever, we will not bow to your threats and your bigotry and your, the hatred that you spouse every day. You know, but at the end of the day, we, you know, we have all these big platforms and all these big things we want to tackle, but we are, I'm running for municipal government, local government. So for me, it's about the people, right? This is, and this is selfish, because there's nothing that I enjoy more or makes me feel better than when I can help an individual end up in a better place. It's not just because I want to help, I like it. I enjoy it. I like being in a position where I can use the privileges that I have to make somebody's life, life better. And so I'm running for Ms. Uh, Fulkerson, who grew up in Cambridge, worked for the school department for 40 years, at the age of 74 came to see me and due to some uh, family crisis needed to find a new place to live. And she didn't know where she was going to turn and she sat, we sat together and she talked about how hard it is and how she didn't expect at age 74 after working her whole life that it would be this hard. And I was able to help her navigate the housing system, advocate for her, and within less than a week, she is in secure senior housing in East Cambridge where she grew up, surrounded by her family, and she's happy and she's safe. I'm running for my thistle here, who some of you who came to my birthday party heard, who's this distinguished looking gentleman that you sometimes see selling spare change news out in front of Whole Foods on Prospect Street. Mike, and he allows me to tell his story, um, um, has been battling in and out of homelessness for 20 years. And he and I connected at a, at a, at a movie screening for a documentary on, on homelessness. And we were able to work together. I was able to help Mike get secure housing. And because of that secure foundation, he's going back to be recertified as a drug and alcohol counselor. And we'll, and we'll be working with the Cambridge Veterans Department and Council of Veterans in Cambridge. Yeah, no, the bottom line is what people do not know about this is that I had cancer, 30% chance of living. 
when I told this story to Mark, I did not live in Cambridge. Get that. I did not live in Cambridge. I was not his constituent. He cared about me as a person. He wanted to help me as a person. And ironically, I actually got a Section 8 from Everett, and he was able to help out and, and fast lane it to where I actually had a great place to live. Instead of spending $800 for a rooming house where I was saving heroin addicts on a regular basis with Narcane. He helped me more than you'll ever know. And the key factor is, this man cares about everybody, not just the constituents of Cambridge. So that's, those are the reasons why I'm running, right? I, I, um, I'm running because we need to be, uh, we need to support the most vulnerable folks in our community even more than we do. I'm running because we need to continue to be the progressive community that I know that we are. And I'm running because I love the people who live in this city. And there is nothing I enjoy more than being in a position where I can help them on a daily basis. So why give me your number one vote? As Marjorie pointed out, there are some great people running for city council, both incumbent and non-incumbent. And that's really true. Some great people uh, who I've known. I can't even, you can't even say great people anymore without gagging, right? <laughs> He's ruined that. Some amazing people. Um, so, you know, why, why give me your number one vote? And, and I know we have a complicated system in Cambridge in terms of voting, but the simplest think, way to think about it, your number one vote is your vote. It is the only way to ensure that the person you most want to get elected, whether that's me or somebody else, gets your ballot. Right? You give someone a two, a three, a four, or five, it's all up to chance whether or not they see that vote or not. So whether it's me or somebody else, whoever you're committed to, you need to give that person your number one vote. Because otherwise they won't get there. And I hope it's me. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about two things, and it's collaboration and concrete action. Collaboration is a dirty word in politics these days. The division that exists in Washington is, I mean, I've never seen it this bad. And you have folks on the far right who say to a Republican, if you collaborate with a Democrat on a bipartisan bill, we're going to make sure you lose the next election. And we're starting to see that on the left too, right? This litmus test of who's the most progressive, right? And if you don't do exactly what we want, we're going to come after you. I think, and that's trickling down to Cambridge politics, and I think that is a very bad place for us to end up. Because it takes collaboration, it takes listening to people. At the end of the day, we want to move the needle forward for the agenda that we fight for. And that takes being able to work with people, not shutting people out. And so if you go and you look at, not, I, if Robert Winters was here, hopefully he'll put a chart about, about this. <laughs> Um, on his website. I have filed major initiatives with every single member of the city council. Councilor Toomey and I have worked on local businesses and small businesses. Councilor Devereaux and I have worked on environmental issues. Councilor Mazin and I have worked on immigration issues. Councilor Carlone and I on animal welfare. Leland Chung and I on early childhood education. Craig Kelly and I on short-term rentals and Airbnb regulations. Councilor Marr and I on ordinance and my major partner uh, for the last four years, Mayor Simmons, on affordable housing, right? And, and, I don't, and I don't think you'll find any other councilor who's going to be able to say that they have been able to collaborate with every other member to the degree that I have been able to do that. And we have some great, and Marjorie mentioned, some great non-incumbents running. Um, I don't know, if, is Alana still here? She's going to have to take off. She just left. So, my ability and, and my track record of working to, with people extends in, into those, with those challengers as well. Alana and I have worked together on food insecurity and the Weekend Backpack Program, right? Which, and she has done an amazing job with that. Um, uh, Sambul Siddiqui and I, when she was in high school, uh, was a member of the Cambridge Kids Council. I was on the school committee. We worked together on policies to help families and children in Cambridge. Sam Gabru and I, when he was in high school and I was on the school committee at Gotham Hole, um, worked together to make Cambridge the largest city on the East Coast to close public schools for the Muslim holiday of Eid out of respect for the Muslim members of our community. 
um, Sean Tierney, who's here, and, and, and I collaborate on affordable housing incentive program that made it easier for people to convert their homes to solar energy. So my, my track record of being able to collaborate and bring people to the table and work with them on common issues to move the needle forward, I think speaks for itself. And that's one reason I hope you consider giving me your number one vote. The other is concrete action, right? Because it's easy to get up and talk about all the things you want to do, but actually doing them and getting them passed and getting them done is, is difficult. So affordable housing, we all know it's the number one issue facing the city. We all talk about it. Well, um, Mayor Simmons and I have really been the leaders on the council over the past four years in making changes to the policies in Cambridge that will directly impact and improve affordable housing opportunities for people. And the, the, the three quick ones I will talk about, last term, Councilor, uh, then Councilor Simmons, now Mayor Simmons and I, uh, worked together to triple the amount of money that commercial developers have to pay to the city when they build a new building. That money, that was $4.58 a square foot for years. We raised it to $15 a square foot, which is gonna generate millions of dollars for the city earmarks for affordable housing. Um, Mayor Simmons and I filed the policy order that led to the city of Cambridge taking Vail Court, that those two dilapidated, horrific buildings in Central Square by eminent domain, and that's going to be, that's going to, we're going to build 100% affordable housing on that site. Right? So, uh, and most recently, as co-chairs of the Housing Committee, Mayor Simmons and I took the consultant's report for inclusionary zoning, which is the percentage of affordable housing residential developers have to give to the city. We took that record, we took that report, we worked through the housing committee and drafted the recommendations and the regulations that have now become a new ordinance in Cambridge, which raises that percentage from 11 and a half to 20, which is gonna create hundreds and hundreds of millions. And we also added a requirement, we also added a requirement that developers now have to build affordable three-bedroom units so that we can help low-income families stay in the city. Yes. Um, when Mr. Trump was elected uh, president and started his uh, hatred tour on, on immigrants, um, a person came to me, Manny, where are you? Manny Lasardi, raise your hand, Manny. Higher than that. Manny Lazardi came to me a few months after and said, um, you know, we need a liaison for immigrant affairs in this city. We need somebody on the ground who can work, particularly with our undocumented residents of Cambridge, to help them through this incredibly scary time, help them get services. So three days later, a press release was out. Manny had business cards, and Manny became the liaison for immigrant affairs out of the vice mayor's office. And I, I brought him up there. Within, within a couple days, any single. any single, within a couple days, we were helping a refugee from Africa who had medical needs and housing needs, and we were able to help him get the medical attention he needed, and the housing he needed, and the legal help he needed. And Manny led that charge with my assistant Jamila, who's here somewhere. And so, that is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about concrete action. We then, Manny and I, then lobbied the city manager. We now put into next year's budget over a hundred thousand dollars for for a full-time city position as an immigrant liaison for the city of Cambridge, and that is now going to be an official office of the city to make sure that we're standing behind our values. <laughs> and, and lastly, because um, you've been listening a lot, lastly, I do want to touch on the homelessness issue because it's been a cornerstone of, of, of my work on the council. When I realized after uh, being elected um, the first time a couple years ago, that Cambridge had a 10-year plan to end homelessness, and we were in year nine, and not much had changed. And so I said to the city, we gotta do better, and we need to do more. So I called for the creation of a new task force to come together to look at how do we solve, or at least support, our homeless population, both with short-term goals and long-term goals. The city created that task force, we have recommendations, we're moving towards those recommendations. So we're, gonna, we're making continued progress. But I also realized that this was a regional issue. So I pulled together Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, Medford, and Malden to create the Metro Boston Homeless Summit, where we're gonna meet six times over the course of the year to talk about how do we work together as a region to support each other, to 
look at services that are overlapping, where there are gaps in services, how do we support all the great work being done at the State House on this issue, because this is a regional issue that we can't solve alone. And then lastly, um, it's a gross night out there, right? And we have a lot of people in our community who either can't go to a shelter or won't go to a shelter for various reasons. So I approached the city manager and I said, this isn't okay, we gotta do something. So we were, I was able to manage to get $250,000 into next year's budget to create Cambridge's first warming center for the homeless that's going to be open from November to March next year where folks who can't go to a shelter can have a safe and warm place to go and get off the street for the night and be warm and safe. So, thank you. So I hope to come back. I hope to return to the council. Um, as Marjorie said, um, you can't take things for granted. Um, my first re-election to the school committee, I lost. Um, the reason behind that was a lot of people said, we thought you were safe. We didn't give you a number one vote. We gave you a two or a three because we wanted these other people to be there with you. And I lost. And the things that I had fought for, the improvements I fought for around social emotional learning, special ed, those kinds of things withered away for a couple of years because no one else picked up the charge. So I don't want that to happen with the issues I'm fighting for in city council. So if you support me and you believe that I should be there, the only way to make that happen is to give me your number one vote and get others to do the same. So I thank you all so, so much. I appreciate your support so, so much. Um, and I'm going to keep fighting for you. And I'm going to keep fighting for the people who aren't in this room. Thank you.